You want to do your intro real quick? Uh, sure. All right, let's try that one more time. This okay. Is the, uh, just your, you know, your intro. Okay, sure. Hold on a second. Um, so my name is Anne, Canadian PA, orthopedic surgery. This is my true life. This is my true life. And this Put a is swag my, on that too. Like. This is my true life. <laughs> this is it. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Anne. I'm a Canadian physician assistant practicing in orthopedic surgery. This is my true life. guys, this is Adana. Welcome back to my channel. We are doing another True Life series. For those of you who don't know about my series, I do True Lives about different PAs or pre-PAs in the profession. And um, you can look at all of those videos on my channel and just type in True Life series and you can see some of the ones that I've already done. But today we're going to be doing a True Life. I'm a Canadian PA with Anne right here. I'm really excited about this. Um, you know, I've been wondering a lot, you guys, what is it like to be a PA in Canada and just a PA, an international PA in general. Um, we're here at APA, guys. Oh my yes. goodness! <laughs> so excited about this. Look, some beads! <laughs> Just tell us a little bit about yourself. So I actually um, am really into a lot of different passions. So first and foremost, it's always been graphic and web design as well as social media marketing. That's been something that I've been to when I was very, very young. Okay. So I was always an early adopter of Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. Anytime something new came out, I would love to experiment with it. In 2013, I acquired my first SLR. It's a it's the smallest um, handheld Canon that you can use. And I only used a, a kit lens. So I started experimenting with food photography because I'm also into baking as well. It's kind of embarrassing. I haven't actually shared this with anybody publicly before. Oh, but, I'm um, the first! <laughs> and now you guys get it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I do a lot of buttercream cakes, cupcakes, drip cakes. I haven't gotten into fondant because it's super technical. But what I'll do is I'll browse through Pinterest or if I see something really inspiring, I'll just kind of want to try it out and then I'll I'll go ahead and photograph it and, and oh, it's, it's that super is fun. So cool. Yeah. I like cooking. I'm not really that great of a baker per mm -hmm. se. That's not like my thing. So that's really cool. And just started a brand new YouTube channel about being a PA in Canada. So if you're interested about that, go ahead right now and head on over to her channel and subscribe. The link will be in the description box below. But and just tell us a little bit about what your channel is going to be about. So it's essentially about being a PA in Canada. <laughs> Um, it is literally um, requirements to get into PA school, what it's like to practice as a PA. I mean, there's so much content that out there about American PAs, um, which is excellent because we borrow a lot from what you guys do in the States. But um, I was finding a lot of my um, audience was asking for uh, YouTube content. So it's a brand new medium that we're trying and it's been very, very fruitful so far. That's but you guys will get to know <laughs> more of Anne in this series that is that we're about to do, The True Life, I'm a Canadian PA. Cannot wait for you guys to get all of the information about being a PA in Canada, but we're going to do that in just a few seconds. <laughs> So um, I was doing my undergraduate degree in the Bachelor of Health Sciences program at McMaster University. Um, at the time, I uh, was working towards becoming pre-med, and I knew that I wanted to pursue medicine, but I wasn't sure if the medical school traditional route was the right one for me. I was gearing up to prepare to write the MCAT, and I almost signed up for the preparatory course. Um, but I had a change of heart. I spoke to my guidance counselor and she had mentioned that uh, McMaster was actually starting the very first PA program in Ontario and that they were going to be taking their first class in. I was in my third year at the time and I decided uh, after going to the information session that I was going to wait a year so they could figure out the kinks and then I would go ahead and join the class. I ended up speaking with a second year, uh, or sorry, a first year PA student and she told me about the philosophy of the program, the, uh, the education, as well as how PAs practice. And I just 
fell in love with the philosophy of it and I decided to apply. Luckily I got in and that's how I found out about the PA program. So right now PA is only practice in four provinces in Canada. It's Ontario, Manitoba, Alberta, and New Brunswick. The Canadian Association of Physician Assistants is working on uh, adding more provinces and territories to introduce PAs. And uh, for the most part, uh, a lot of healthcare providers have heard of PA and the potential of PA, but aren't quite uh, sure about the potential for the PA to make a difference in their practice. So often more than not, uh, what ends up happening is that um, P, uh, physicians will take on a, um, a PA grad or a PA student uh, and that student actually has to educate the uh, physician a little bit about what PAs do and um, we find that patients aren't too sure what PAs are so a helpful uh, similarity that I like to use is that we're very close to nurse practitioners uh, in terms of how we see and assess patients and how um, how you might be treated in a primary care setting. In other settings, we're somewhat similar to a junior or senior resident, depending on the number of years of experience. And then beyond that, PAs are a lot like um, a second version of the physician, being able to see and assess uh, patients being so familiar with the practice that um, they know all the treatment protocols, are able to perform procedures, and are, are quite autonomous and very skilled as, as time goes on, and they're be able to build that knowledge and competency. So in Canada we have three schools in total that are in the civilian setting and in the military setting um, there's just the one school. So for um, there's two schools in Ontario which include the PA Consortium which is actually a collaboration between three schools, uh, University of Toronto, the Northern Ontario School of Medicine as well as the Mishner Institute. Uh, that's based in Toronto, Ontario, but part of that is distance education. The other program is McMaster University, uh, and the third is University of Manitoba. So Manitoba is a master's program, and um, uh, Ontario, the Ontario schools, uh, the PA Consortium as well as McMaster, are actually bachelors. Uh, so the requirements uh, tend to vary a little bit between, between the three schools. Uh, first and foremost, across all schools, you have to be a Canadian citizen or permanent resident of Canada. Now, I don't set the uh, admission requirements for the programs at all, and I can only speculate as to why that is a requirement. But right now, um, Canadian PAs can only practice in Canada. So um, I think... In my personal opinion, I think it would only be fair to admit Canadian students since the degree that you end up with will only allow you to practice within Canada. We cannot go and practice into the United States or in other countries right now uh, because we can't challenge the pants because the PA schools are currently not uh, ARC PA um, approved. So uh, that's one, being a Canadian citizen, um, PR resident. Uh, if English is a second language, then you need to uh, provide uh, proof of your proficiency. And that varies between the different schools too. So you can go to their websites to find out what specific requirements you, you need, whether that's a certain TOEFL score. And then uh, if you are an international student, whether you're uh, an international medical graduate or you did your degree in a foreign university, and this includes if you are American, uh, but are a Canadian citizen or permanent resident of Canada, then you need to have your grades um, accredited because you need to, they need to ensure the GPA translates into um, sort of Canadian terms. The other part is uh, a, a little bit of a differentiating factor between American PA schools and Canadian PA schools. So right now you do not need a GRE or MCAT in order to apply to the schools. Uh, only one school requires healthcare experience hours and um, at the time of recording it is 910 healthcare experience hours for the PA consortium program slash U of T. The healthcare experience hours have evolved over time so always be sure to check out the website to find out what the requirements are. Uh, before they required um, paid direct health care experience, uh, now it can be paid or voluntary and as long as patient care is involved then you can apply. Uh, McMaster and University of Manitoba does not require health care experience hours in order to apply. However, that's not to say that isn't an asset to have uh, when you speak to it on your supplementary application or uh, letter of intent to the university. Uh, the second part is GPA. So in Ontario, the GPA is based on the OMSAS scale, which is used to calculate GPA for medical schools in Ontario. And um, we do it out of, in Ontario, it's out of a 4.0 scale. At University of Toronto right now, the minimum GPA requirement is 2.7. Uh, 
in McMaster, it's a minimum of 3.0. At um, University of Manitoba, I believe it's a 3.5 out of 4.5. Their GPA scale is a little bit different in terms of how they calculate it. So you can go to their website to find out the scale conversion for GPA. With that being said, the reality is, is even though the minimum cutoff is at a certain amount, the uh, average of students that get in tends to be a little bit higher. And that's not to say that there are other aspects like leadership, communication skills, uh, your written, uh, written and verbal are, um, are important attributes as well, and how well you can speak to your experiences and relate to the PA profession is important too. McMaster University does not require uh, any courses, um, prerequisite courses and um, University of Toronto doesn't state that they have required courses, but there are courses that are recommended, which I believe is in anatomy and physiology as well as chemistry. University of Manitoba has um, requirements for anatomy and physiology as well as biochemistry, and um, that, that's a requirement that you have to have, and there's a certain number of course hours that you need for that. So I believe you just have to ensure that all your paperwork is submitted on time um, before you, you get into it. So Canadians write their own version of the PA certification examination. It's overseen by the Physician Assistant Certification Council of Canada, aka PAC with three C's. What it is, is um, it's written in October around the time of the Canadian PA conference and um, you have to be a member of CAPA, the Canadian Association, in order to write that exam. So um, it's got a very similar blueprint uh, to the PANTS exam with the exception of the fact that it's based on uh, CANMEDS PA, which is our version of our national competency profile as well as scope of practice. So they cover the different topics that are, uh, that are involved in that. So in terms of scope of practice, I'm going to start with how PAs are actually educated in Canada. So it's a 24 to 26 month program, very similar to American PAs, except a little bit of different philosophy depending on the school that you're looking at. So usually first year, the first 12 months includes didactic learning where you're in the classroom. All schools use a combination of traditional didactic with problem-based learning. Uh, they're learning clinical skills in the classroom and completing placements, uh, usually half-day observerships uh, in the community with practicing physician assistants, uh, physicians, as well as allied healthcare professionals. So when I was in my first year, um, I had the opportunity to shadow a pharmacist or paramedic. At the time, uh, there were I didn't know of any civilian PAs practicing in Ontario because we hadn't um, gotten that far with introducing them yet. So I, I did shadow uh, a few physicians in that regard. Really got me some exposure to how PA, um, how medicine is practiced in different settings. And your second year is your clinical clerkship. So in that year, uh, you spend um, 12 to 14 months completing core and elective rotations. So core rotations tend to typically be family medicine, eMERGE, uh, OBGYN, pediatrics, internal medicine, uh, as well as surgery. And then we have the option to do elective rotations as well. Uh, so I did mine in orthopedic surgery. What else did I do it in? Urology and dermatology. There are a few different requirements um, depending on the school you go to. So for PA Consortium, for instance, 50% of your rotations are done in northern or rural Ontario, and that gives you uh, exposure to different kind of learning settings and different patient populations, which I think is very unique. So we are trained as generalists. Uh, I know in the United States, you guys do have residencies for PAs where you can get additional training, but that doesn't exist in Canada right now. So if you are interested in a particular specialty, what ends up happening is you will choose that specialty for your elective so you can build up your references and your skill set, um, or possibly convince a preceptor to hire you once you're done your rotation. After that, you go straight into practice and it's a lot of on the job learning, So, uh, but it's with the intention of keeping you for the long term. So you start working for a practice and our scope of practice is very broad, but it's also dependent on the supervising physician or collaborating physician that that we are working with. So for instance, um, if you're trained as an eMERGE uh, PA and you were performing lumbar punctures and you switch specialties and go into a family medicine practice, if that family med doc doesn't typically do lumbar punctures in that office, then even though you have that skill set, you can't, you, sh you, you really shouldn't be doing that because within the practice agreement that you have at that site with that supervising physician, they don't typically do it in that setting. There is lateral mobility, so we are able to switch specialties. There isn't a uh, specialty that we 
can't work in. Uh, we generally work in anywhere that a collaborating physician would like to work with a PA. So I know that in the United States, you um, PAs are working in very, uh, very subspecialized um, areas. Uh, so pediatric ICU, pediatric oncology, interventional radiology. I don't know if we're quite there yet in Canada, um, but we are seeing PAs go into different specialties and, and, and working. <laughs> A big challenge um, for us, I guess what I'll, uh, what I'll talk about is the experience that I had speaking to two new um, PA grads in, at the conference. We were sort of comparing our American and Canadian experiences and sh uh, one girl that I had met had recently been hired by a uh, neurology team and they had already known how to work with PAs. It was very well established. The employer knew what they were looking for and they knew how to utilize her to the top of their scope of practice. There was a PA from here in Louisiana that had mentioned that PAs aren't as well integrated in this state. So there was a lot of education uh, to healthcare providers as well as patients as to what a PA is, what they do, and how they could oversee their treatment. I feel like we're very, a little bit closer to the situation in, in Louisiana where um, the public and healthcare providers aren't as familiar with PAs, they may have heard of them. So what's a little bit challenging is um, when you're working with employers, uh, you may be the first PA in that hospital and that is not uncommon. So uh, for instance, at the community hospital that I work at, um, PAs were re recently introduced uh, earlier this year. So just in January, they had their very, very first two PAs, and that was in the ortho service. So there was a lot of work around um, educating all the professionals about uh, how nursing staff would interact with PAs, consulting physicians on different services. Um, how am I communicating with you? What's your knowledge base? What, um, what can we expect? Um, so it involved a lot of education professionally and ensuring that uh, everyone was on the same page when it came to working with the PA. And then from a patient perspective, uh, ensuring that the patients understood the care that they were receiving and what our role was uh, in that team, in that team-based care. Yes. <laughs> so PACs are, uh, are completely accepted in Canada. Um, some employers prefer you to have the Canadian Certified Physician Assistant designation, the CCPA. So you would need to be a member of CAPA in order to practice there. In addition, um, in order to get the PA liability insurance, that's only offered through the Canadian Association, Association through membership and access to the internal job board listings and the network and community of PAs that are Canadian would also require membership to the Canadian Association. So if you do join, you can technically practice with your PAC, at least at this time being in Ontario, uh, Manitoba, Alberta, New Brunswick, but it is valuable to be able to join the Canadian Association of Physician Assistants. I do see a greater need for PAs in Canada. Uh, right now, um, we do have a philosophy uh, for the, from the Canada Health Act of uh, universality access to healthcare, portability, um, and justice. So those are the principles of the Canada Healthcare Act. I feel like PAs help fulfill all of those different circumstances. Uh, healthcare spending uh, is a lot and there's obviously not enough to go around. PAs are a cost efficient way to help address uh, some of the healthcare discrepancies that are um, that some Canadians are going through. So being able to access a healthcare provider in a timely manner, being able to reduce wait times and reduce physician burnout is, um, is a, it's, it's a huge issue in Canada as well as I understand in the United States. We're also involved in resident uh, education and learning. And from the feedback that I've spoken to with uh, surgery residents in Toronto, uh, whenever they've had a PA on the surgery team, the PA actually takes care of inpatient and ward management while the residents focus on the OR so they're able to take care of the call in that regard and they have said you know every surgery team should have a PA it's just better for resident quality of life and resident education uh, patients enjoy working with us um, we're able to uh, decrease wait times uh, in order to see a provider so in, for instance instead of waiting three to four weeks to see your family doc um, the PA might have an availability so you can see them um, whether the next day or within the same week we love taking time to see our patients, spend time in patient education, and uh, we love building rapport uh, with patients and staff. So um, I do see that there is a need. We're a cost-efficient way to provide quality care within the healthcare system, and yeah. 
So if you're interested in becoming a physician assistant in Canada, uh, the first thing that I would recommend is that you do as much research as you can about what PAs do, their scope of practice, challenges to practice, and why they why PAs uh, enjoy working within healthcare. Just like any healthcare profession that you're considering, it's important to be reflective of what your values are, what's important to you, and what your long-term goals are. Like any other healthcare profession, PA school is competitive, so you want to ensure that um, you're at least at par with other average candidates that are applying and um, you know, work on your communication skills, see if you can speak to or shadow a PA to learn more about their reasons for going into the profession. There are currently 700 PAs in Canada and we are growing, but there's certainly a need for more. So I'd definitely encourage you to apply, um, look into what your requirements are and do your best in admissions. And this is my anthem, yeah. All right, you guys, that was amazing. I got so much really good information, and really what I came away with was that we're not that different, honestly. Yeah. You know, there are slight little things here and there, but for the most part, everything is pretty much the same, even like our scope of practice. So that was really cool to know. And also, I can go to Canada and work, you know, in a couple of years <laughs> if I want to. So yeah, that's I'm really Canada. exciting. <laughs> so anyways, um, if you guys have not already done so, please go on and head on over to Anne's YouTube channel channel and subscribe right now um, like I said the link will be in the description box below and you can also follow her on Instagram what's your Instagram handle so it's at Canadian PA blog I'm also on Twitter at Canadian PA and I'm also on Pinterest at Canadian PA and you can also find me on Facebook the Canadian PA blog <laughs> it's pretty straightforward <laughs> yes yeah, so go on and head on over to all of those different social media handles that she just named and follow her there as well because she's doing some really great stuff for Canadian PAs um, and just PAs in general thank you so much for that thank you guys so much for watching this true life series I hope you guys got some valuable information I really really appreciate you taking the time out to talk to me about this and and to just inform people on what it is like to be a PA in Canada um, awesome. if you guys haven't already done so go on and head down way up over I think it's over here subscribe to my channel if you haven't already this way yes subscribe <laughs> to my channel if you haven't already done so follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA um, and you can also just send me uh, emails at Adana the PA at gmail.com as well if you have any further questions and leave your comments in the comment section below thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time bye bye I think it's really amazing what you're doing. I think that there's a huge need for PAs and the demand is certainly there, hence all the programs and all the people looking into it. But um, that group of pre-PAs, they need encouragement yeah. and they need guidance. And if they're motivated and willing, you're just like the perfect passionate person <laughs> to go to for encouragement and guidance and sort of mentorship. And I think like you just, hit the nail on the head with the different topics that you do for your YouTube. So like GRE versus MCAT and um, I think you do one on MD versus PA yeah, as and well MD, and the different yeah. topics. Yeah, It's certainly answering a lot of questions and I know Canadian viewers have been watching you as well. So it, it makes a huge difference and well, hopefully oh you're goodness. inspiring the future uh, generation of PAs well, and clearly you. you're meeting all of them here at the conference. <laughs> so it's, it's been yeah, it's been phenomenal, and we it's such a privilege to like finally meet you. No, honestly, like I've been talking to my husband. I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to talk to her because I really want to know what it's like right. to be a PA in Canada. Like, I that's so interesting to me, just PAs and in, like international PAs in general. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited to yeah. meet you. Like, no, I'm, I was I was super excited. It's been very surreal. I mean, I came across your channel, and I love your brand and I love your energy. Like. For me, I'm very introverted, so it takes like a little bit of energy to like bring it up. Like I have some friends that are YouTubers, so they're like, yeah, you, you should stand and like puff your chest up. <laughs> and like, it just seems very natural for you. Like that's like your authentic personality.